Ladies and gentlemen, it's a big, weird, wild world out there, folks, and here we stand. Al pie del cañón, ready for anything. I'm Rob, that's a Natch, and you're listening to... The Bravo Show! <laughs> Intro's too long, Natch. <laughs> it's not for smokers. How are we doing out there, folks? It is... Uh, I don't even know what day it is, Natch. I think it's Tuesday, right? Oh, oh. Dudes, we made it past Monday. We are heading full speed into Tuesday, into the middle of the week. How are you doing out there? Big good morning to Born to Iron Man, The Bridge, Annie, um, ooh, who else? Vero. Oh my God, so many beautiful, amazing people in the chat. How are you doing out there, folks? Um, yeah, you were just listening to Richard Vaughn there with um, a bunch of guests. Now it's time for the one and only Probo Show. Friends, I thoroughly tortured the elves yesterday, and this is the show they have delivered us. I asked a hundred people to name something that people might be seen doing in their vehicles at a rest area on the freeway. Um, Dime algo que la gente podría estar haciendo en sus coches en un área de descanso, diría Snatch. De una autopista. De la autopista. Yes. Oh. Nivelazo. Then in complete the news, um, we find out who might be the only person that can defeat Donald Trump in um, the 2024 presidential election. Oof. It's a good one. Do you know? Mm, let's see. And then in, um, in our unpopular opinions, we're talking about red receipts. Recibos de lectura, a lo mejor, Natch. I don't know. How do you say this? These are the, you know, when you get the two blue ticks on WhatsApp or on Instagram, it says red. We call those red receipts. ¿Cómo se dice en español eso? It would be confirmaciones de lectura. Confirmaciones de lectura. Okay, so the unpopular opinion today is los confirmaciones de lectura han arruinado la comunicación online, en línea, en el internet. Okay, so red receipts have ruined online communication. Um, how are we doing? The cruelest day, says, um, says uh, The Bridge. No, Monday's the cruelest day. I don't subscribe to this idea that Tuesday is the worst day of the week. No, come on. People say like you can still smell the freedom of Sunday, Natch, and I don't buy that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Monday is not better by its association to Sunday. Sunday is a is a pretty crappy day, too, because, you know, the next day you have to go to work. No, no, friends. Tuesday, we've already gotten our feet wet in the doldrum of making other people rich. <laughs> so, yeah, here we are on a Tuesday morning, my friends. Um, you know what? I'm here. You're here. Let's see what's going on in the world. Oh, wow. We've got Tom Smith. How are you doing? Um, we have Pedro from Instagram. Good morning. Stay blessed, Victor, says Annie. How are you doing, um, how are you doing, Annie? Good morning, beautiful warriors around the universe, says Vero. Happy 10th birthday to my nephew, Victor. Happy birthday, Victor. 10th birthday. Mm, he probably won't hear this until he, after he gets back from the mine snatch. <laughs> um, how are you doing out there, folks? Okay, so let's get into some news. Um, a bit of a follow-up on yesterday's story. Remember how we mentioned that um, Australian schools, as of 2024, are going to be incorporating chat GPT into their curriculum? Well, this is a phenomenon that is stretched even to Europe. Um, high schools in Denmark are embracing chat GPT as a teaching tool rather than shunning it, rather than, you know, Rather than turning our back on this technology, um, high schools in Denmark are embracing it as a teaching tool. High schools in Denmark are taking a proactive approach to the rise of artificial intelligence. Chat, um, chatbots like ChatGPT. Instead of banning these tools due to concerns about cheating, educators are integrating them into the curriculum. Yeah, an English teacher indicated a project to use ChatGPT as a learning tool. Now, five Danish high schools are participating in a two-year project that promotes the use of AI chatbots. Um, would you encourage um, Baby Natch to use chatbots, Natch? Yes. Why not, eh? Why not? Mm -hmm. Why not? I mean, at the end of the day, it seems like when they enter the workforce, they'll be working alongside, if not, you know, competing against... Um, AI chatbots. Better have that into, um, education now. 
than later. Better than it, they come, in, come as a surprise, right? Later on in life. Um, so the Danish are forward-looking, says, um, says the bridge. Yeah, it seems that way. It seems that way. I applaud that, man. I applaud that. Can we get a Probo approved? Oof. Probo approved. All the technology in the studio today, Natch. Yeah, we started a little bit late. The audio wasn't working on the stream. My God. My God, friends. Um, yeah, I applaud it. Um, I wish it would um, expand a little further into our educational systems, honestly. Do you do you think Spain is going to adopt this technology eventually, Natch? Mm, eventually, yes. But as always, with everything, we'll be the last one. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, if you're an international listener, we, um, we produce this show from Madrid, Spain. Um, yeah, you know what worries me right now? is the reactionary approach in education towards chat GPT. Well, reactionary as a sense of, you know, as re- reacting negatively towards it rather than proactively doing something about it. Oh, they're right. The people are cheating using chat GPT. I mean, come on. Come on. This technology is here to stay. The genie is out of the bottle. If you're going to be proactive about it, then then fine. But don't um, don't complain without offering any solutions we all learn that in the workforce don't go to your boss with problems go with solutions right anyway so there you go a little follow-up on um, on ai in education okay let's continue with the climate crisis i know a lot of you hate when i mention the climate crisis why because it's still quite it's unnecessarily a contentious issue you know um, because I think the political right of in in many countries, not in every country and not every person, have adopted this issue as a point of contention. You know, it's secular. The world goes through these changes automatically. Look, I will argue whether humans have participated in the, in the climate crisis. I believe they have, but I almost think at this point it's irrelevant. The climate is changing. We need to react, right? <laughs> you know, we can debate who caused it. If you if you feel like that's a constructive argument, I do not. Um, but the fact that it's happening is is a fact. This is um, a study. Well, it's a study reported on by the Guardian. The climate crisis is costing sixteen million dollars an hour in extreme weather damage. Wow. Wow, that's incredible. $16 million an hour. The climate crisis has resulted in damages costing approximately $16 million per hour over the past two decades due to extreme weather events as per a recent study. Uh, These weather-related events intensified by global warming include storms, floods, heat waves, and droughts, from 2000 to 2019, the average annual cost was around $140 billion, with 2022 alone accounting for $280 billion in damages. The study, um, which is the first of its kind to provide a global estimate of costs directly linked to human-induced global warming, suggests that these figures are likely underestimations. Yeah, incredible stuff. Incredible stuff. What I will do every day of the week, if you need me to, is um, is debate with you whether whether humans have had a hand in um, in exacerbating this uh, this issue. If we, if you find that productive, I honestly don't. I just think that's a waste of our time. Another one of these things where we get caught up in the populist politics of the hour, you know. Uh, well, you know. Uh, Donald Trump says, uh, Joe, Joe Biden says, you know, the fact is, it's, it's happening, man. I mean, I, all I have to do is open my door in the morning in mid-October and feel it's 26 degrees outside to know that something strange is going on. I mean, it's not, it's not rocket science, friends, you know. I mean, we're, it's the 10th of October right now, friends, and you could sunbathe outside. That's not normal. Um, If you're in the chat, let me know if you're experiencing any extreme weather. I know um, Con in the chat, he's joining us from South Africa. They recently had some extreme weather. Uh, So the day, oh, sorry, Um, we read that. Sorry, bridge. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. Um, Okay, 
60 Minutes, uh, an important kind of news documentary series in the uh, in the United States. 60, 60 Minutes, kind of interview, uh, in-depth reporting. Um, interviewed Jeffrey Hinton. Jeffrey Hinton is considered by many the godfather of artificial intelligence. And he was interviewed by 60 Minutes. I saw quite a lot of this in- interview yesterday. It was fascinating. Here's some reporting from Fox News. Terminator technology could one day take over humanity. The godfather of AI warns. So, yeah, the godfather of AI is warning that Terminator technology could take over humanity. (laughs) Just in case you weren't worried enough by climate change, the rise of fascism. (laughs) Got increased cost of living. Now we have to worry about Terminators. (laughs) <laughs> Lucky doors, friends. Um, it was 35 and 40 this weekend, says Con. My God. Reached highs we haven't seen in 50 years. There you go. That's in South Africa. My God. Ronnie is joining us. How are you doing, Ron? Um, so Jeffrey Hinton, often referred to as the godfather of AI, has expressed concerns about the rapid advancements in artificial intelligence. In an interview with 60 Minutes, Hinton suggested that within five years, AI might be able to reason better than humans. Um, Reasoning better than humans would, um, for me, imply the advent of AGI, um, Artificial General Intelligence, which is often referred to as intelligence that is comparable or better. Um, than uh, than humans, I think that's probably quite um, quite an optimistic timeline. I would say certainly within the next ten, but within the next five, all right. AI might be able to reason better than humans. So he emphasised that while humans design the algorithms that AI uses to learn, they often don't fully grasp how that learning transpires, especially as it becomes more complex. Hinton warned of the potential dangers when AI starts writing its own code to self-modify, emphasizing the challenges in ensuring the technology remains safe. Yeah, I mean, this is the big worry, right, Natch? AI is already in many cases better at coding and doing certain tasks than humans. I know you might argue, no, no, that's not true. Look, do you know as much law as AI, I don't. I'm not good at, as good at maths as AI is. I'm not as quick at writing essays as AI is. You know, I think you. I think most of us are experiencing um, the Dunning Kruger effect when it comes to our own skills. Do you know the Dunning Kruger effect, Natch? It's uh, human um, uh, the capacity to overestimate our own abilities in comparison to those around us. <laughs> and I think, like for some reason. The advent of um, of AI is a, is having us all way overestimate our own intelligence. <laughs> I mean, just look at Brexit if you want to know how dumb we are. <laughs> I mean, come on, guys! If you don't um, play with Chat GPT and get this existential dread about the future of the human race, then you're not playing with it enough. Would you? Do you do you feel that Natch when you play with AI? Like, oh my god, this is almost too good i don't know like i do i do not just kind of nodding there stoically well you know <laughs> i mean the fact of the matter is this technology is okay it may not be as good as humans is a good as a human in everything but this technology is good enough at a lot of things you know I mean, I don't want to be a scaremonger here. I certainly don't subscribe to the idea that Terminator technology is going to wipe out humanity. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think if humanity suffers, it'll be be because our leaders, our elected leaders, haven't done enough um, to protect us from the unemployment that will will arise from um, uh, these machines. I think that's the real danger here. As always, the human element when it comes to technology. So let's continue anyway. He also highlighted the uncertainties around um, AI's future, suggesting that while AI might not necessarily rule humanities, uh, rule humanity, its capabilities could significantly um, alter human civilization. 
Other experts echoed Hinton's concerns, expressing the need for regulation and preparedness. I would agree with that. I think the problem, you know, Natch, I've thought about it. I've done some thinking about this. The problem is that um, is that um, our politicians, our world leaders, are not incentivized to do anything. You know, they're already rich. They're already, their lives, their nest egg is already, has already been laid. They're already sat on a nest full of eggs, you know. Whereas most of us, you know, are struggling to feed our families. And this is only going to get worse, guys. I mean, if you're in marketing right now, if you're if marketing is where you're at, ChatGPT can do 90% of the work. <laughs> you know? Um, we've we've read stories about CEO, like bosses of companies being replaced by AI. The w- world's first AI radio DJ. You know, we've just seen one of the biggest writer and actor strikes in the world, partially because of um, because of the adoption of AI by movie studios. If you don't think this is going to affect you, then you are woefully mistaken, my friends. And it's not a problem of the technology. Technology marches on. The genie is out of the bottle. Um, our politicians aren't doing anything to protect their citizens against the oncoming deficit in jobs <laughs> and the amount of people that can fill them. They aren't doing anything because they're not incentivized. So how do we incentivize them? I say we create politician GPT. You know, we'll teach them a little bit of ethics, foreign policy, history, <laughs> and just re- unleash it on the way. I would, would you vote for politician GPT, Natch? Of course. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. Dispassionate. All it cares about is um, maximizing the wealth and prosper- prosperity of the citizens underneath its control. So it's number one directive. I would I would vote for pol- politician GPT 99 times out of 100. Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? If politicians aren't incentivized to, to help us out, let's replace them. <laughs> right, comrades. Sorry, wrong meeting. <laughs> let's see what people are saying in the chat what um what part of russia are you from eugene how are you doing eugene joining us right now in the chat all the way from russia we have normal weather for october in my place it's now four degrees oh my god looks like an ai apocalypse might be next says con i, do, I don't think so con but we we do certainly not because of ai's nature look ai could possibly look at humanity and say You know, these guys are going to kill themselves. And we talk about that. Like, that's a problem with the AI. (laughs) Uh, If it does come to that conclusion, friends, I've got news for you. Um, The AI is working fine. And it's us that are broken. (laughs) We are broken. I just want to make that clear. Anyway, where where are we? Uh, Pedro, Terminator 1 is a good movie, but it obviously doesn't portray the reality of AI. What makes it potentially overwhelming is its ubiquity and limitless source of data. For that, the movie Her was much more visionary and realistic. True story. In fact, one thing that I've avoided reporting on, but that has um, popped up in my feed quite often, is the um, the idea of an AI romantic partner, which was touched upon, obviously, in the movie Her. Um, uh, you know, and there are, there are, there are apps out there that that certainly fill that purpose. It's terrifying. The problem, Rob, is, as always, um, starting before thinking. Yeah, it could be. Maybe AI came too quickly. Um, We can trust AI to be coded um, neutral. Can we trust AI to be coded neutral, be filled with neutral information instead of it just helping the rich? Yeah, that's a great point. I don't know that the answer to that question means something worth chewing on. Um... uh, uh, Eugene, he says, I live in the center of Russia, approximately 1,500 miles uh, from Moscow. Uh, kilometers, sorry, from Moscow. Perm City. Um, we can make it so easy for ourselves. No more, oh, our headquarters are in the Cayman Islands, so we don't pay taxes. No more government lockdown means nobody except politicians get paid, etc. Yeah, politician AI for the win, dude. I mean, I am completely serious about this. 
<laughs> anyway, comrades. <laughs> uh, let's move on to today's uh, unpopular opinion. Unpopular opinion. Oh, Natch. <laughs> okay, today's unpopular opinion, today's brain fart, today's rayada um, is red receipts. Uh, confirmación de lectura, right? In, okay. Confirma, confirmaciones de lectura han arruinado la comunicación en línea. Red receipts have ruined online communication. I thoroughly tortured the elves and they gave me some pros and cons. Let me highlight them for you right now. Um, okay, so in the pro column, agreeing that red receipts have ruined online communication, knowing someone has seen your message can create a sense of obligation to respond immediately, leading to rushed or insincere replies. True story. Ugh. Have you ever had any... Um, I don't want to get you in a trouble match. Have you ever heard of any friends <laughs> getting into trouble because they haven't replied? To their partners, they've left their spouses on red. Uh, well, yes, yes. Uh, there are some couples that I don't know that I are very. How do you say that? They're very. How do you say? Possessive. Very. Yeah, very possessive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, I hear you. Very controlling. Mm -hmm. Not in my case, unfortunately, and I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't get it either. I, it would make no difference to me to see the two blue ticks. I would. My first thought would be, ah, they're thinking about the reply. But a lot of people don't see it that way. <laughs> so it's, it's crazy. So let's continue. Added anxiety, the anticipation of a response. After seeing that someone has read the message can heighten anxiety, especially if a reply is delayed. The absence of an immediate response after a red receipt might be misinterpreted as ignoring or neglecting even if the receiver is genu genuinely busy. Um, and red receipts can be seen as invasive as they allow others to track one's online activity or availability. Okay, it is an infringement on privacy in my eyes. Let's continue on with the con arguments, disagreeing with the statement, saying, no, red receipts are fine. Confirmaciones de lectura, they don't matter. Here we go. Red receipts provide clarity that a message has been seen, preventing misunderstandings about missed communications. Uh, knowing a crucial or time-sensitive message has been seen can help streamline conversations and decision-making. Um, most platforms allow users to turn off red receipts, giving individuals control over their communication preferences. Okay, there's a good point, Natch, but... You make, I make judgments about people <laughs> who turn off red receipts. It's not something you can just do. You need to start a relationship by having those red receipts turned off. Because if you all of a sudden turn them off, what is that person hiding? I mean, to be fair, I've, I've been in a very controlling relationship. <laughs> and I've suffered most of this. But it's true. Like, as soon as you start, as soon as you're forced into that mindset, it just brings up questions that are kind of unnecessary. Why do we need that? Why do we need to know whether a, a message has been read or not? Why do we need that, that pressure? I find it unnecessary. We don't need red receipts. For those people who already suffer with anxiety or some form of depression, who are, you know, reading between the lines, you know, feeling ignored unnecessarily when maybe the recipient is just busy, why... Why bother in the first place? What does it actually bring to the table? I would say it only brings more problems and it does solutions. But no one needs to know my opinion, guys. What we need to know is yours. I'm going to post the poll in the chat. And you're going to tell me, red receipts have ruined online communication, true or false. Friends, um, a lot of things you could have been doing this morning. Instead of doing those things, you took the time to spend some time with me. And it means the world. See you soon. Hey guys, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash professional bohemian. There you'll find VODs of the episodes as they are recorded live, blogs, vlogs, and behind the scenes content. If you'd like to watch the show live, you can do so on twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian. And you can participate in the polls we use in the show on Instagram at professional bohemian or Twitter at probo, P-R-O-B-O-H. Okay, on with the show. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. You're joining us on the Probo Show in our second half. It is 9 a.m. Central European Time, 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for our friends in the U.S. and 3 p.m. for our friends in the Hong Kong, in Hong Kong and the Philippines. How are you doing out there, guys? If you've just tuned in, what have you missed? Well, we um, we kind of did a little more catch up in the kind of educational revolution, you might say of countries starting to adopt um, starting to adopt chat GPT and other large language models into our educational system, which I think is so important. I think it's so important not only to learn how to use these tools, how to cut the anxiety around um, uh, around our potential <laughs> our potential replacement by these tools, but also to identify when uh, chat GPT is hallucinating. In um, uh, in the in the field of artificial intelligence, hallucinating is basically when when uh, an, a language model or whether uh, an intellectual um, argument proposed by um, ChatGPT is incorrect. It hallucinates answers with a lot of confidence. I think education around this issue is vital. Let's continue. Uh, we also looked at the climate crisis costing sixteen million dollars. An hour in extreme weather damage. Um, in um, uh, we just heard from our friend Con in South Africa that yeah that they're expressing record temperatures as we are here in Spain for October. Didn't we break a record recently, Natch? In October for temperature, I think we did. Yeah, craziness, crazy. It feels like the summer out there. It feels like the summer out there. And then we um, uh, we looked at uh, our friend Jeffrey Hinton, the Godfather of AI, warning people of Terminator technology. Chill out, Jeffrey. (laughs) Chill out. I don't think we're... I think the real danger of AI is our own reluctance to act upon it rather than... um, Rather than the artificial intelligence itself, and then we uh, and then we went into today's unpopular opinion, which was that red receipts have ruined online communication. I asked people on Instagram, so I posted this poll yesterday. Can you guess how they how they answered, Natch? Mm, yes, they said true. They said true. They did. Seventy one percent of people said true. Do you do you get any? Um, do you worry about this at all? Is are red receipts even on your radar? No, I I can't see the, the the problem. It's like you want a quick answer, call. Yeah, yeah. If you don't want it. It is perfect. The confirmation is perfect. The double check, like well, okay, my yeah, yeah. partner or my friend has received it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I used to think the exact same way until I invited into my life someone with um, with extreme anxiety. And at that point, I understood why people turned off red receipts, you know. Um, and obviously, anxiety is a is a is a problem. It's a mental issue. It's not um, it's not something that can be controlled. And you know, once you start viewing red receipts from the lens of someone with anxiety, you start to see the cracks start to form around it. Um, it's interesting. I saw um, there was actually a, a study done by the University of well, Arizona, Arizona State University, um, with regards to availability stress among young teenagers. This stress arises from the perceived obligation to be com- um, constantly available online and to respond promptly to messages once they've been marked as read. The study found that teens not only felt pressured to reply quickly, but also expected swift responses from their peers. Some even resorted to messaging friends through different apps if they didn't receive a timely reply. Um, uh, while these features create a sense of pressure, many youths express that they wouldn't want life to live without them. Now, this is, in in essence, the crux. That same person who, who, gave, who was like a nightmare about if I responded quickly or not, um, insisted that, the, that, we, that I kept red receipts on. Yeah, so it's like something that damages our mental well-being and... We think so much about it that we can't live without. That's the kind of technology. That's you know. That's how we how we feel about addiction, man. 
I think in society, the the rise of um, social networks. See, a lot of you thought this was going to be a light subject, and it's not. <laughs> the right the the rise of social media in our culture has led to something psychologists call spotlight syndrome. Have you ever heard of spotlight syndrome, Natch? I don't know how he says spotlight in um, in Spanish. Do you spotlight? To be in the spotlight is like to be in el, en el punto de mira, maybe. In yeah, yeah. The centro de atención. Centro de atención. F- foco de atención. A spotlight is the, the single light that shines on a performer when they're performing alone, like a stand-up comedian or something like that. And spotlight syndrome is our, our tendency to think that people are thinking about us all the time. Like in reality, don't, people don't think about us. You know, they're just living their lives and rolling on and forward. Um, And I think um, if you do suffer from this or if this is something that is at least on your radar, the idea that someone has read a message and not replied is in in itself um, sending a negative message to you. Oh, this person doesn't want to speak to me. You know, in reality, that person is probably just busy or thinking of a better response. And I think red receipts... Um, you know, I think r- red receipts only exacerbate this problem, as um, uh, as highlighted by the Arizona State University. But anyway, let's get uh, let's see what people in chat are saying. Uh, we can make it. S- oh no, we read that one. Vero says true. The person sending the message wants to know that it has reached the receiver. I don't think it's important to know when it has arrived, but that it has arrived. Yeah, yeah. Look, I know I have no problem with the delivery receipt. I have a problem with the red receipt. I just think it's unnecessary. Uh, Let's continue. It's not an invasion of privacy if you can turn it off. Um, I mean, as you well know, red receipts um, are on by default, right? You can turn it off. Of course you can, you know. Um, But that doesn't make it any less pernicious, you know. It's the kind of technology that creates a need for itself. It creates creates anxiety where no anxiety needs to occur. Uh, let's continue. Uh, let the message hang. It's not going anywhere. I agree. Um, it definitely used to. It definitely used to add pressure, and it and it still does. But I feel like s- starting to turn around again. By ha- now, most people I know just don't care about it. Everybody is just. I'll answer when I have the time, and I'll get an answer when they have the time for immediate for immediate answers. You call. Or maybe for people in my sphere are just more mature. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a question of maturity. I think it's a question of um, of where you are on the mental health spectrum, right? I mean, one thing's for sure: we're living in um, we're living in a world today where we are under more scrutiny than ever before, and you know, we we're used to like our patience is not what it used to be. Dudes, if I wanted to talk to most of you people who are are listening to the show right now, like a hundred years ago, I would have been, I would have been sending you a letter. You would have received it in a week, (laughs) sent it back to me and we'd have spoken about it, you know, over the wireless. Now, many of you are downloading the podcast minutes after I've produced the show. A lot of you are joining me live on twitch.tv barra forward slash professional bohemian. We are in a world of immediacy. You know, every driving factor of modern technology is about immediacy, faster, quicker. And we're losing the ability to put on the brakes. It's easy to see why we have an anxiety epidemic in the world when we look at how um, technology has evolved to make us, or, or to give the impression that we're all available all of the time. And I can understand it. I can completely understand it. Hmm. Let's continue with um, people. what people are saying in the chat. I'm not entirely convinced of this one. I guess the red receipt makes the communication more effective, but I do agree it creates wrong expectations and misunderstandings. Having the red message doesn't mean you had the chance to reply it, to reply to it. On the plus side, especially with children, I do believe it's good to know if they not only received it, but they also read the message. It's a matter of security. It's a great point. Conman says, I only really care to see if my message was sent and checking if my data is working. 
Um, other than that, I could ca- I couldn't really care if they read it instantly or not. Uh, f- for communication, um, um, for com- communications amongst adults where security is not an issue, I don't see the value. I also voted yes, says Pedro. I think the word you are looking for is gracias, says, you, says Pedro to Eugene. Let's continue. I don't think it ruined communication, though. Um, wow. I The fact that you can turn it off. Yeah, let's get into my final thoughts in a second. One thing is certain, it should not be the standard, says Pedro. And yeah, and I agree with that. Yeah, any messenger app, like even Instagram messenger, which basically just exists for bots, and for you guys to talk to me. <laughs> yeah, even the, even red receipts come as standard on there. And I feel bad. Like, I get a lot of messages, guys. And quite often, I'll read some on... I'll leave some on red because I'm in my daily kind of working, you know, role. My daily working environment. And I don't have the time to pause, read the message in its entirety and reply. You know, when you used to send a letter, you had no idea if it even got to the recipient or not until you received a reply two weeks later. Come on. Um, People wouldn't... Uh, okay. Um, thank you for that MJ symbol. If you could send it to me on uh, on Instagram, an idea there for an unpopular opinion. Pedro, um, back, t- back to text generative AI, such as ChatGPT. I had a discussion with a colleague... Um, from MS some time ago. He told me that the problem is that the technology is designed to create co- coherent text. It's not necessarily providing accurate information. That's why it hallucinates. It will always prefer to say something rather than um, uh, providing accurate information. Thank you for that insight, Pedro. All right. Okay. So how did people land on this one? Before I, we go into the vote, I'm just going to kind of... Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to close with my um, final thoughts on this issue. Has it ruined communication? No. All right, maybe it hasn't ruined communication, but it has certainly contributed to um, uh, to the anxiety around the immediacy of of um, online communication. I don't think it's the only thing, but you can certainly see how people, young people especially. Um, are becoming more anxious where, around um, what it is to communicate with people, not only face-to-face, but also online. We're becoming a more insular society. You know, The idea that someone has read a message but not replied is horrific to a lot of people, whereas a lot of us, older people, who remember what o- online communication used to be or sent a letter to a friend in our lives... Understand that the immediacy isn't always to the net benefit of the communication. Sometimes to take a pause, read and reply accordingly, not in the heat of the moment, is for the net benefit of communication. But it's certainly easy to see in this fast-paced world how a red receipt can damage relationships. I've seen it happen, not only with myself, but as, as the Natch mentioned, in other relationships... He left me on red. Have you ever heard that phrase before? <laughs> he or she left me on red. She ghosted me. Mm. Yeah. The fact that our um, uh, we receive a red receipt with no follow-up communication, the fact that we are taking that as communication in itself is a problem. Because what we're doing is we're jumping to snap kind of conclusions that may or may not exist. Has it ruined online communication? Possibly not, but it certainly hasn't helped it. So I made the statement, um, red receipts have ruined online communications, and you guys said... 60% true. Yeah. It certainly hasn't helped it. <laughs> Weekly Probo Show letter. Do you want a weekly newsletter, guys? We could make that happen. Um, All right, friends. On that note, let's go to today's 100 Humans. Oh, my God, friends. It was a long walk to work today across snow-capped mountains and through river valleys. And on that walk, I encountered 100 humans. And I asked them all a question. Today's question was, name something that people might be seen doing in their vehicles... At a rest area. 
on the highway or freeway. Uh, dime algo que la gente podría estar haciendo en sus coches en un área de descanso de la autopista. I asked them that question. They gave me their answers. I have the top seven answers here. Your job in the chat, in the live audience, is to identify those top seven answers. Woo! All right, Natch. As always, we um, we begin with you. What do you think, sir? Eating something. Eating something. Eating something. You know what? Um, MJ Symbol and Eugene agree. Eating something. Is it there, though? Yes, it is. Well done. Eating or drinking is there. It's the second most popular answer with 17 of 100 humans. Congratulations, Natch, Symbol, and Eugene. Rafelka says, sleeping. Sleeping. Yeah, keep it fam- family friendly, guys. <laughs> sleeping. Is sleeping there? Hmm. Yes, it is. Well done. And Rafelka with 38 of 100 humans the number one answer you know I just said keep it family friendly but meh you know (laughs) maybe one of the answers is kind of you know I'm just gonna you know I'm gonna stay quiet but maybe one of the answers isn't 100% family friendly (laughs) all right MJ symbol says using the bathroom going for a wee wee (laughs) Um, uh, all right, is it there? Mm, this is a tough one. Do I give it? Do I not? You know what? Yeah, I'm going to give it to you. All right. Quite a lot of Americans in the 100 Humans Natch, and they said freshening up. Freshening up. You know, it's kind of going to the bathroom, splashing some water on your face, vacating your bowels. <laughs> so, yeah. Freshening up. It's there. Well done. All right. Um, arguing with your kids, says Rafelka. <laughs> arguing with your kids. Is it there? No, it's not. Oh. The kids should be in the mines. Whatever. Um, okay. Eugene says reading. Mm. Eugene, reading what? Mm. Or using what? Uh, I, oof, I can't give it to you, but you're so close. Reading a what? <laughs> El something in Spanish. <laughs> All right. I know it's L because it ends in a. You know, you know what I mean? You Spaniards and your rules. Whatever. All right. Let's see. Um, buying good for the motorway says... Buying food for the motorway. That kind of comes under eating, drinking, I guess. Yeah, shopping. It's not there. It's not there, Vera. Uh, Getting changed. That's kind of freshening up as well. That was from the bridge. Using one's phone, says MJ Symbol. Using the phone. Is the phone there? Yes, it is. Well done. It's there. Okay, what is something that you read? Uh, taking a nap, says Pedro. We had that sleeping there. It was the number one answer. What is something you read, Natch, but not? it's not a narrative thing, but it's something that will help you while um, navigating the motorway. What, do you, what am I talking about? A map. Reading a map. Well done, Natch. <laughs> Nachete killing it. He's killing it. <laughs> um, a GPS says symbol magazine yeah magazine's not there but you know it's, they're all good answers they're all good answers um, and then kicking the kids out of the car says Rafaelka <laughs> all right um, okay if I drove Natch I would have to stop every 30 minutes to do this <laughs> or every hour come on every hour what am I talking about Smoking. Smoking. Well done, friends. Eugene got smoking. MJ Symbol said eating. Am I putting on a little weight? (laughs) I think I am. Pedro got smoking. Well done, guys. Okay, one left. Remember I said, you know, it needs to be family friendly, but 
The third most popular answer. It's not, I'm not saying, you know, people are stopping to have sex, but maybe they're stopping to do, you know. <laughs> it's just so hard to give a clue. What What is not sex? What is like two steps before, Natch? A kiss. A little kiss. Well done. Hanky panky, says MJ Symbol. Kissing, says Eugene. Kissing, says Rafelka. Well done, guys. Okay, let's run down the list. I asked 100 humans to name something people might be seen doing um, in their vehicles at a rest stop along the motorway. Dime algo que la gente podría estar haciendo en sus coches en un área de descanso de la autopista. And they said, in position number... Smoking, with three of a hundred humans saying smoking. In position number six, with four of a hundred humans, we had reading a map. Reading a map, using a map. Yeah, it's a difficult one to know which um, verb to use. Reading a map, leer mapa. Okay. In position number five, we had freshening up, refrescarte. A little change of clothes, maybe a little pee-pee, splash some water on your face. Fre- freshening up. In position number four, we had using your phone. Using your phone with 11 of 100 humans, usar el teléfono. In position number three, we had kissing little beso. <laughs> the family-friendly version of what people probably do at the motorway rest stop. <laughs> in position number two, we had eating and drinking, comer, beber. And finally, in position number one, was sleeping. Well done, friends. Pedro also said cuddling. Nivelazo, Pedro. <laughs> Vaya nivelazo. Yeah, yeah. Nivelazo. All right, friends, let's move on to today's Complete the News. Complete the News! Okay, guys, you know how this works. It's Complete the News. I'm going to give you a genuine, a real news headline, un titular, but I'm going to leave out some important information. If you're one of the many people watching the show live... You can play along. All you have to write is A, B, or C to help us complete the news. So here we go. Blank is the only person who could defeat Donald Trump in 2024. Um, Blank es la única persona que podría derrotar, ganar a Trump. I don't know. What's the best word to use there? Both. Both, okay. In um, 2024 says um, uh, a former aide of Donald Trump ooh, by the name of Elisa Farah. Okay, so blank es la única persona, is the only person who could defeat Trump in 2024. Que podría derrotar a Trump in 2024. But who is it? So this ex-aide, a former aide, um, accesses... Accessora, would you say? Aid? Assessora. Assessora. Um, her name was Alicia Farah Griffin, one of Donald Trump's former aides. Says that only one person is capable of beating him in 24. Is it A, Oprah Winfrey? Is it B, Taylor Swift? Or is it C, Michelle Obama? A, B, or C? What do you think? So, blank is the only person who could defeat Trump in 2024. Is it A, Oprah Winfrey, B, Taylor Swift, or C, Michelle Obama? According to a former Trump aide, Alicia Farah Griffin. A, B, or C? What do you think, Natch? Taylor Swift. You think B? You think Taylor Swift? The Swifties will come out to vote. Is, is any of the baby Natches big Taylor Swift fans? Well, no, they like some songs. Yeah, yeah. She's massive, eh? One of the most powerful people in, in the world right now. Apparently she's dating a sports figure or something. There's been some some controversy or something regarding her possibly dating or not dating. I don't know. I know so little about celebrity nonsense, man. All right, so the votes are in. Everybody's saying C, Michelle Obama. All right. Okay, so there is only one person, according to Alicia Farah, that can beat Donald Trump in 2024. That person is... 
Well done, Natch. It was Taylor Swift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we go. That This piece of news from uh, the New York Post. Alicia Sarah, uh, Farah Griffin, one of Donald Trump's former aides, stated that pop star Taylor Swift is the only person who could potentially defeat Trump in 2024 re-election bid. Um, this comment was made during an episode of the View Behind the Table podcast. All right, guys. Well, that's all we've got time for today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Beat in terms of number of votes. I mean, beat. How do you how do you beat someone in an election? Symbol? Come on. Come on, my, my friend. All right, guys. Um, thank you so much for trying uh, participating in the best part of my day every single day. There are so many things you could have been doing this morning. Instead of doing those things, you took the time to spend some time with me, and it means the world. See you next time. Yeah.